it lights up the path and, and still keeps the top dark. So there's a, a little claustrophobia from the light in there. So I think that's a good call. I'm not sure we saw, well, we do set up a trap. Well, you're getting better with the dodges. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> did you notice? Yeah, I did. <laughs> you yeah, like three or four in a row there. We're here in our dailies room. Uh, where we go through the, the game, whether it's design or whatever, but today we're going to focus on lighting. We have to make sure that the lighting and the audio set the tone and the mood. That's so critical for us to make sure that we, we nuance this. And that's kind of what we're doing now is making sure that the lighting is in the right place for the mood. All due respect to everything else in the game, lighting and audio are 80% of horror. And so we spend a lot of time on them. Lighting goes in before audio. So lighting is our first glimpse at how tense the game is. How scary is it? We use Unreal as a, as a basis. It's a fantastic foundation. It already has so much built into it that it contributes to realism. It was a good jumping off point for us. We are super fortunate in that we have an incredible rendering team out in Spain, full of some of the greatest rendering minds. And uh, we have a, such a close collaborative uh, partnership with them on the art side and the rendering side. What we did was took a look at the state of the art for, with the Unreal Engine, and then we took real reference. And what we tried to do was measure objectively the difference between the state of the art and what reality was. Our art director, Demetrius, just gets it. He was on Dead Space. Our lighting director, Atsushi, is a master at it. He worked on Dead Space. He's been with me 12, 13, 14 years. So yeah, we actually we did a, this exercise when I actually out like a USS Hornet in Alameda and the bunch of us actually did the photogrammetry and captured the Fuse Arbido uh, texture. And I actually uh, even actually measured the uh, how bright the light is, taking the light meters, taking a nose and values, come back to your uh, studio, we create it in the game, in the Unreal Engine, to make sure what we actually trying to achieve as a visual goal is achievable by the scientific approach we do. In that sense, working with the rendering team in Spain really assured us to kind of make sure that they can provide us the tools and the rendering feature we need to be able to hit the realism that we actually uh, need for this game. Because it's sci-fi and because it's horror, it's all created from your imagination. Whoa. We have to make sure that we use textures and lighting and sounds that are relatable. If it's completely foreign, you might not be as scared. You know, you got to be, oh, I'm, I'm, I get that, you know, that's kind of scary. Or that lighting scheme is always scary in some movies or games like that. So here and there, you got to make sure it's believable and relatable. Well, you always want us to immerse the player, so like, it's yes. part of immersing the player. So in the garage, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we've talked a lot about the original Alien and that uh, warehouse area with the chains hanging down. It was all blues and whites, and that was relatable because of the chains, right? right. Just because of the chains. Scott's uh, influence, I mean, uh, your own influence from Dead Space 1. I mean, like, you know, right. we had a lot yep. of browns in there took cues from that as well as like you're saying alien one is huge and alien crazy. one was a big one some of the browns also come from carpenters the thing we watched a lot of sci-fi horror movie yeah prometheus is also pilots that we actually look into as well yeah there's a lot of event yeah. horizon in some of these mm -hmm. and uh pandorum it's not a boatload of sci-fi horror because they're just so expensive to make uh in terms of movies and not a heck of a lot of games either yeah that was pretty cool when you do light up the uh, the snowcat, can we keep it in cool colors? I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't mess with the browns in here. Yeah, this has a really good be, look. Yeah. If I can get the music a little more tense, walking up, I think it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Almost felt like it was too bright. Too bright? Uh, I, I, I you know I don't want to mess with it. You mean walking up to it? You think? I think walking up. Let's just try try with the with the uh, music first, and then we may have to adjust the lighting. You know, d did you want to? Add like a, a white hit there, like a frame, a couple of frames just white out. Oh, the whole thing? Yeah. Or you think the sound will be like, you know. Let's try sound. Okay. Yes, let's try right. sound first on top of that. I think the sound with the light matched it really well. I don't think the timing was off on that. It's a scare that will get a few people. It. I may ask him to turn it up even more. 
Just 10. It should be a 10, the, yeah, yeah. I know he doesn't always like to go there, but uh, when we do, we scare people. All right, this is good, this is a good scene. I almost think that light there, even though it's important to go there, it may be too bright. It may be taken away from the outside scene, and it may be taken away from the uh, the lightning. Let the music get in there, and then yeah, we'll we take a... Yeah, see what I mean? It's like, we know to go there, but it may be just... It's almost twice too bright. A little bit, you want a softer, maybe like... I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you both agree? I, I agree, yeah, yeah okay. sure. That's kind of polished stuff. It's nice, it does lead your eye straight to uh, to the con other control room right up there. It's a nice lineup. Yeah. Uh, you know, the way you talk about the misleading, right? Misleading to kind of get you, get you, yeah, jump, uh, jump scare too, like, you know. That's so you too. want to wait till we put the music in, tense it up, and then... Yeah, I mean, definitely, I mean, this is like, oh yeah, this is definitely, I mean... Well, you know to go too, there, too but bright. it's one of the yeah. brightest things in there. I, I agree with you, like, you know, I think if we tone it down a little bit, because then it's kind of more balanced with what you're looking at in the background. Yeah. And yeah. you'll still know to go there. I mean, is it dip, that hue is going to be different than everything right. else. Right, it, it is much different than the rest. All right. We'll have Nassim drop in the music That's leading right. up. We'll just pull it down about 30, 40 yep. percent. Okay. Everybody knows that my number one word is quality. What I ask of everybody is whatever you're working on. If it's just the bark of a tree, if it's just, you know, a shoe, just give me your best work. Talk about your art bible for a sec. Oh my yeah. gosh. It was a great benefit to come on really early on in this project. Having a really strong vision from Glenn and understanding what we wanted to go for, that allowed us to spend a lot of time doing a lot of research and getting references of modern day applications, say of prisons or other things. We wanted to have that authenticity to make the game relatable. Like, the game's supposed to be 300 years in the future and immersion was so important for us, especially in a horror game, that we wanted the user to always have a point of reference. And all that began with research and looking for touchstones uh, just in modern life and being able to extrapolate that into the future. So when the player was playing the game, they would instantly feel grounded and they would uh, understand their surroundings. That's really important because we would isolate the player with the darkness So and foreign foreign technologies, foreign aliens. So we wanted them always to uh, have a point of reference. But you were, you guys did so much research that uh, for a while there, it seemed like every day you would send me like a thousand photos and you were like, this is the dark, this is the, this is the rim lighting, this is this, this, and then you guys put together an art Bible that was fantastic, right? It's it took us, it took a long time and that art Bible is how we were able to keep every artist looking like it's just one artist did the whole game. We had so many different look sets, uh, yeah. so yep. many different environments, which helps because you don't, uh, you want the player to feel like they've gone through a journey in yep. the game. Yep. And so we wanted to give that, but it was a tremendous amount of work because with each of those different sets, you have to do the amount of research that goes along with it. So like Glenn was saying, we would send them pictures all the time. And uh, they, finally I said, okay, they're, they're, all, they're all good. Just put them in. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the other thing that we did that we haven't done was we took it into concept art as well. Like we have thousands of pieces of concept art, but there was times now where we're like, I need one just for lighting because lighting was so specific in some areas to get the scare or the monster yep. or whatever that we spent that extra time mm -hmm. on concept art. And right. that really helped, but that's really going the extra mile yes. uh, to get that scare right. A lot of work, a lot of research, a lot where we're like, nah, throw that one out. This, oh, that one's right. It all paid off. You can see it in the game right now. And uh, just excited to uh, have uh, people play it. Mm -hmm. So really back everything. to what Glenn said, it's about the team. I think um, we have such a talented team. It's certainly the most talented team I've ever worked with. And it makes it feel easy. I'm excited that what we're making matches what we planned. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, see Good you job, guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.